welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are testing the Ryzen 9 7900X 3D. It was released a little over a year ago now, so the timing feels right. <laughs> Seriously though, this was never a CPU that I was interested in because at $600 US it just didn't make sense. Just six cores with access to that 3D V cache. And we knew this even without reviewing it because, well, we knew what we needed to know about this series with the 7800X 3D and 7950X 3D. Not only that, but AMD also only sampled the 7800X 3D and 7950X 3D. They didn't sample this one, which meant if we wanted to get the 7900X 3D, we were going to have to part with $600 US. And as I said, we kind of already knew that that was a CPU that at that price just wasn't worth buying. So we, we didn't buy it. And also at the time, there was just more interesting products to cover. But anyway, it's a year on now and we're finally looking at it. But before we do, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermaltech and their CTE E600 mid-tower case. As part of their centralized thermal efficiency series, it features a dual chamber design, making it big on the inside with loads of room for not just building a new PC, but also managing all the cables with ease. The CTE E600 includes a PCIe 4.0 riser cable and floating GPU bracket for vertical GPU mounting and can support up to 14 120mm fans or 12 140mm fans. And despite the unique design, it uses high quality materials including tool free perforated mesh and tempered glass. There's also room for up to a 420mm radiator in the front, rear, bottom and or back tray, allowing for plenty of customization and cooling. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so as I've made pretty clear at this point, $600 US, that thing's just not worth buying. You were better off going with the 7950X 3D for $700 US. It was a mere 17% price increase. It landed you 33% more cores. And more crucially for gaming, you got the two extra a 3D V cache enabled cores, like what you get with the 7800X 3D. Alternatively, you can get the 7800X 3D that was available upon launch for $450 US. So not only was it a lot cheaper than this thing, but it was guaranteed to deliver better gaming performance as it packed eight 3D V cache enabled cores all in the one CCD. Whereas the 7900X 3D was limited to just six cores uh, with the 3D V cache in the primary CCD, whereas the secondary six core CCD didn't have the 3D V cache. So there was scheduling issues there all kinds of problems that would compromise performance or could. So that was that really. Well, until the pricing changed, of course, and changed it has in a rather big way. The 7800X 3D can now be had for as little as $370 US and the 7950X 3D $580, which is near enough to a 20% discount for both parts. But those aren't the biggest discounts. The 7900X 3D has seen 35% slashed off its price dropping to just $390 US, making it a mere $20 more than the 7800X 3D, but it packs an additional four cores. And this pricing adjustment has caused many of you to pause and consider the 7900X 3D. The only problem being, there's very little benchmark data online as this part never had a review program. So I finally went out and got one and then threw a battery of gaming benchmarks at it to see how it compares to not just the 7950X 3D, and 7800X 3D, but also the rest of the Ryzen 7000 series. For testing, we're using the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master motherboard running the latest F22 BIOS. And for the memory, we have a 32 gigabyte DDR5 6000 CL30 kit. Then for the GPU, we're of course using the GeForce RTX 4090 as it's our best tool for measuring the gaming performance of CPUs. And this means we'll also be testing at 1080p. If you don't understand why reviewers test this way and you'd like to learn more, then we do have a video in the description that you can check out rather than waste time explaining all of the benchmarking basics here. Okay, let's get in the data. First up is Baldur's Gate 3, and this has been a great title for the X3D chips. The 7800X 3D, for example, was 52% faster than the 7700X, and that's obviously a very big margin. However, whereas the non 3D V cache parts are all quite similar in terms of performance, the faster X3D variants see more variance in the results. The 7800X 3D and 7950X 3D delivered similar performance, but the 7900X 3D was slightly slower, trailing by a 7% margin. And this is because there's less 3D V cache enabled cores, just six rather than eight. And the game is scheduled to only run on the 3D V cache enabled cores. So the CCD 
with the 3D vCache. Out of interest though, I did disable the non 3D vCache CCD on the 7900X 3D, creating what would be a 7600X 3D if such a part existed, and doing so further reduced the performance as presumably the second CCD was being used to handle background tasks, or really anything not relating to Baldur's Gate 3. Even so, the 7600X3D, if it existed, would be almost 30% faster than a 7950X in this example. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, we start to see some examples of why it's hard to predict the performance of these processes. The dual CC design of the 7950X3D costs it some performance here, as the 7800X3D is up to 6% faster. But reducing the 3D vCache core count to 6 further reduces performance here, as the 7900X3D was good for 171 FPS, making it 12% slower than the 7800X3D. Then if we again disable the second CCD on the 7950X3D, again effectively making what would be a 7600X3D, performance actually improves by 6% as we're no longer paying a penalty for the cross CCD communication as those additional slower cores aren't useful in this example. Still, it's a bit all over the place, but essentially for maximum performance, you want eight 3D vCache enabled cores, and with scheduling not being perfect here, ideally you want just a single core complex die. Next up, we have Hogwarts Legacy, and performance here does improve with additional cores. Not significantly so, but we are seeing better performance with the 7900X3D and 7950X3D over the 7800X3D, for example, and the simulated 7600X3D is slower again. We also saw similar performance trends with the non 3D vCache models. The 7900X3D was 4% faster than the 7800X3D in this example, so not a massive margin, but this is the first example we have seen where the 12 core part is faster for gaming. The Star Wars Jedi Survivor results are interesting, as here the 7800X3D and 7950X3D delivered similar performance. The 7950X3D was just 3% faster when comparing the average frame rate. However, the 7800X3D was still 11% faster than the 7900X3D, as here we see that the game does benefit from having 8 3D vCache enabled cores. This performance deficit wasn't as pronounced with the slower non 3D vCache CPUs. Now, ACC is a game that doesn't utilize core heavy CPUs that well, but it does benefit from improved cache performance and we see that here with the X3D chips. Again, the 7800X3D and 7950X3D are very similar in terms of performance, and while the 7900X3D isn't far off the mark, it did slip a little bit, coming in 4% slower than the 7800X3D. So not a big deal there, but just a little bit slower. Interestingly though, if we do disable the second CCD on the 7900X3D, again, creating a 7600X3D if there was such a thing, Performance does fall away further, and that's not something I expected to see in this example. Spider-Man Remastered sees little in the way of a performance benefit with the X3D chips, though we are using ray tracing here, which does limit the performance of the RTX 4090, but we are still typically looking at over 150 FPS. The 7900X3D is comparable to the 7800X3D and 7950X3D, and we see when disabling the second non-3D vCache enabled CCD that the performance does decline in this example, particularly so for the 1% lows. Now this is a bit of an odd one that caused me more than a few headaches, resulting in multiple clean Windows installations in an effort to fix the 7900X3D's performance. Testing with a Plague Tale Requiem saw the 7900X3D massively underperforming, to the degree that doesn't really make sense for a few reasons. Firstly, dual CCDs don't appear to be an issue here as the 7950X3D was able to match the 7800X3D, but also having just six cores with access to the 3D vCache doesn't appear to be an issue as disabling the second CCD on the 7900X3D resulted in pretty great performance with the simulated 7600X3D. But it gets even more confusing as we do see similar margins with the non 3D vCache parts. And in particular, the 7900X is weaker than you'd expect, trailing even the 7600X. Though this time the 7700X was faster than the 7950X. So that does appear to be a dual CCD issue. But as for why the 12 core parts are so slow, this has to be some sort of scheduling issue with this particular title. 
The Assassin's Creed Mirage results, on the other hand, are pretty easy to explain. With the X3D parts, it's quite clear that having 8 cores with access to the larger L3 buffer results in around a 10% performance boost. Then without the 3D V-cache, all Zen 4 parts cap out at around 175 to 176 FPS, regardless of the core count or configuration. And it's a similar story when testing with Watch Dogs Legion. Again, having an additional two cores with access to the larger 3D V-cache boosts performance by around 15%. So if you're going to purchase an X3D processor for maximum gaming performance, you ideally want to do so with a model packing eight cores per CCD. Hitman 3 has more interesting results for us. Firstly, this game doesn't benefit significantly from the additional L3 cache. The 7800X3D, for example, is just 10% faster than the standard 7700X. Then we see that the game can run at around 230 FPS with six Zen 4 cores, and around 240 FPS with eight cores, or 260 FPS if you add in the 3D V-cache. However, with just six 3D V-cache enabled cores, performance is capped at 245 FPS, and then if you add in some scheduling issues into the mix, as is the case with the 7900X3D, performance drops to what we see with the standard 7600X, so the results are a bit all over the place here. The Counter-Strike 2 results are also quite strange, mostly because there is a noticeable performance uplift from the single CCD models such as the 7600X and 7700X to the dual CCD models in the 7900X and 7950X. It would seem as though scheduling is working really well here, the game is running on one CCD, while background tasks are all taken care of by the second, and it's a bit like how APO enhances Intel's P and E core design. And we see a similar effect with the X3D parts, though here the simulated 7600X3D is a bit slower than the 7800X3D, as the 8 core enabled 3D V-cache part is able to reach new heights, though the 7900X3D is still faster again, if only by a small margin. Finally, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and these results are probably the most straightforward to explain. In short, the game benefits from having more cores with the dual CCD design, and I believe this is down to scheduling working well. Again, the game runs on one CCD, with everything else taken care of by the other, giving the 12 and 16 core parts an advantage, whether that be with or without 3D V-cache. In short, the 7900X3D does well here, delivering a small 4% boost over the 7800X3D, though it was just 5% faster than the standard 7900X. Now here's a look at the 12 game average, and the results look pretty much as expected. The 3D V-cache really helps to accelerate gaming performance, and it really works best when 8 cores can access the larger L3 buffer, as is the case for the 7800X3D and 7950X3D. The 7900X3D on the other hand, it isn't nearly as good when it comes to peak gaming performance, despite performance overall still being very good. After all, the 7800X3D and 7950X3D were only around 7% faster on average, though they do look much more impressive when compared to the non-3D models. For example, the 7800X3D was 24% faster than the 7700X, while the 7900X3D was 17% faster than the 7900X. So still an impressive uplift, but not as significant as you might have expected. So there you have it. The results overall aren't terribly surprising. It makes sense that the 7900X3D isn't nearly as potent as the 7800X3D or 7950X3D for gaming. Also, my sincere apologies for the amount of times you've heard me say X3D in this video. I did try to keep that to a minimum, but yeah, pretty tricky for this sort of content. Anyway, with just six cores enabled or six cores able to access the 3D V cache, the performance overall, you know, it was still excellent, but there's certainly a performance penalty to pay there. And while not massive for those of you primarily gaming, the 7800X 3D does make more sense. Frankly, I've never been that keen on the 7950X 3D. Really, both CCDs should have been armed with 3D V cache. That would have been a killer product. But even so, it can still be every bit as fast as the 7800X3D for gaming, though in some instances you might have to tackle the scheduling issues manually with a program such as Process Lasso. The 7900X3D still has the same scheduling issues as the 7950X3D, at least in some games, with the added bonus of the 6 core penalty. So again, while performance overall is excellent, it's not without its quirks. 
The dual CCD X3D chips were always a bit odd with just one of the CCDs featuring the 3D V-cache, and typically speaking, the larger L3 cache is most useful for improving CPU limited gaming. Though I'm sure there are application workloads out there that also benefit from more L3 cache, we just haven't come across them. And admittedly, productivity testing isn't really the focus of what we do here at Hardware Unboxed. The point is though, the most optimal Zen 4 processor for gaming is the 7800X3D. It ensures maximum performance in all games, at least relative to other Zen 4 processors. There are certainly examples where the 12 and 16 core models are faster, but with a heavy reliance on AMD software scheduling, the results end up being a bit all over the place. And this makes the 7950X3D and 7900X3D niche products in my opinion, as they really only make sense for people who are serious about gaming on their productivity workstations. That said, with the 7900X3D priced at just $390 US right now, it's the exact same price as the 7900X, so you obviously wouldn't buy the non-3D version. Moreover, the 7950X costs $550 right now, and that's a 40% price hike for a 33% increase in core count. And then if you want the 7950X3D, it's almost 50% more than the 7900X3D. So while I would normally recommend you avoid the 7900X3D, it's a seriously interesting part at $390. But even so, I'm not exactly sure who I'd recommend buy it. If your focus is gaming, then the 7800X3D is not only faster, but also slightly cheaper. So for gaming, just get that. It's a simpler solution that ensures maximum game performance as you avoid the dual CCD scheduling headaches. The 7900X3D makes the most sense in my opinion as a productivity processor. So works best for productivity applications, but then in that instance, you are less likely to benefit from the 3D V cache. It seems to mostly enhance gaming performance, not universally, but that's where it seems to be of most benefit. But then the standard 7900X, it's priced at $390 as well. So if you're looking at a 12 core part, a Zen 4 part for productivity purposes, you might as well just get that big L3 cache because essentially you're getting it for free as the 7900X 3D and 7900X cost the same amount. So yeah, in that situation, why not? It really is AMD's best value Zen 4 based productivity CPU right now. And well, that's that. So bit of a niche product. Uh, again, can't really recommend it for gaming because there are better solutions for gaming, such as the 7800X3D. And if you want to game and do productivity, then yeah, probably worth paying the premium for the 7950X3D depending on, you know, if time is money and all that on the productivity side. Anyway, bit of a bit of an odd, tough recommendation on this one. But of course, let me know what you guys think about the 7900X3D at its new $390 US price point. I mean, it's not an official price point. It certainly could go back up, but it is currently at that price and has been for a little while now. Uh, and it's one of the more discounted uh, Zen 4 processors. So yeah, let me know what you think. Very keen to get your feedback and is it something you were considering? Are you still considering it? Do these results change your opinion about it in any way? Let me know. I'll read. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this one. Floatplane Patreon, if you want to get more Harbour Unbox goodness, you can sign up to either one of those. You get access to our monthly live stream. Tim and I get together and answer your questions live and talk about whatever interesting things have been happening throughout the month. We do behind the scenes content, Q and A's, and we have an awesome Discord server. Great community over there if you want to talk tech and well, basically anything else. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.